Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So in today's video, we're going to be covering statics, equilibrium of rigid bodies, and we're going to be finding some reactions here. And this will be our 24th part in this particular series. So what we have going on here is that we have a 150 kilogram telephone pole is used to support the ends of two wires as shown on this picture to the left. The tension in the wire to the left is 400 newtons, so T1 is 400 newtons. And <clears throat> at the point of support, the wire forms a 10 degree angle with the horizontal as shown here. We also have this T2 wire over here that is 20 degrees off its horizontal, and the telephone pole is 4.8 meters tall. So we have two portions here that we have to work on. So part A says if the tension in T2 is equal to zero, determine the reaction at base A. And B says determine the largest and smallest allowable tension T2 if the magnitude of the couple at A may not exceed 900 newton meters. Okie okay, dokie. Okay. So first thing we have to realize here is what are our reactions and what type of reactions do we have here? Well, this is a telephone pole, so we have to think real life situations here. The wires will be supplying forces here. They are not supplying any type of reaction. The only place a reaction is being supported here is at the base at A where the telephone pole is buried into the ground. So <clears throat> what happens here is when you have one support condition that support condition will be a fixed end condition or a cantilevered end condition or a moment connection. Any of those three describe this situation. So what this means is that we are going to have a horizontal force reaction here, A sub X. We are going to have a vertical reaction. Let's just call that A sub Y. And then we are going to have a moment reaction here. And we'll just call that A sub M. <clears throat> and for all three of these reactions here at this fixed N at A, we're just going to assume direction. So we just assumed A sub X is to the right, A sub Y is upward, and A M is going counter or is going clockwise here. So when you're just throwing on reactions, just assume the arrow directions. If your answers in the end come out positive, that means you assume the right direction. If they're negative answers, the value is still correct, but the arrow is in the opposite direction. One other thing that you cannot forget is this right here, the weight of the telephone pole. So we are going to have this weight right here, which let's go ahead and let's just calculate what W will be for our weight. So it'd be 150 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared for our acceleration of gravity. And we get 1471.5 newtons in that downward direction right here. Okay, so let's start working on part A. Well, part A says T2 is equal to zero and we have to determine all our reactions at the base. So we have three reactions we have to determine here. So T2 is equal to zero, so we're gonna completely ignore this second wire here. Alrighty, so since we have three unknowns, one in each direction here, one in the horizontal, vertical, and a moment, what we can use is we can use each of our equilibrium equations here just one time to, sign, to find a single reaction for each direction here. <clears throat> so let's just use each of these and let's just work with what we have here. So let's go with the horizontal first here. So if we sum forces in the X direction equal to zero to have equilibrium held, and we'll take everything to the right as positive, everything to the left is negative here. Well, we have A sub X, which we assume to the right, so it's positive. W is vertical, AY is vertical, this is a moment, T2 is equal to zero. The only other thing that we have is T1, which T1 has a horizontal and a vertical component here, and it's going to be based upon this 10 degrees <clears throat> off the horizontal here. Well, it is going to be 400 newtons and it is acting to the left. So it will be minus 400 newtons, but we have to turn it into a horizontal force because it is a um, force that is in between the X and Y. So what we're going to do is multiply by cosine of 10 degrees to get it into the horizontal. And the reason why we're multiplying by cosine is because our force looks something like this.
<clears throat> where the 10 degrees is coming off of the FX and it has to do with cosine because cosine is adjacent. So anytime you have the angle coming off the direction you're looking at, you want to use cosine because once again, cosine deals with adjacency. So that's all we have in the horizontal direction equal to zero. So easily solve for a sub x. A sub x pops out to be 393.92 newtons. And it came out to be a positive value. So I know that my original assumed arrow direction of to the right was correct. And let me just draw a good arrow. There we go. So there's one of my reactions. All righty. So let's work on the second reaction here, which will be our vertical, Fy. And we have A sub Y going upward, so it's positive. And then I have my weight of 1471.5 newtons going downward, so it's negative. And then looking at the Fy component of T1, well, Fy is going downward because, well, the 400 newtons is down and to the left, so it will be downward, so it is minus. 400 newtons, and this time I'm dealing with sine of that angle of 10 degrees because the Fy is opposite the angle. The angle's not touching it. And that's all I would have in that direction equal to zero. So once again, A sub Y is my only unknown here. So I can solve for A sub Y directly, and I get 1,540.9 newtons, and it came out to be a positive value, so I know my assumed direction of upward was correct, and there is my second reaction. So only one more to go, and that is my AM, my moment reaction value. So let's sum moments about point A, about our reaction here. That way A sub X, A sub Y drop out, and my weight drops out, and my vertical component of my 400 newtons also drops out because everything goes right through point A. So the only things that actually have rotation about point A is my moment reaction and the horizontal components of the 400 newtons of T1. So we would have our 400 newtons and we need to get it into the X direction. So it would just be cosine of 10 degrees. That would be my force. Now I need a perpendicular distance to get it down to A. Well, to get it down to A would be 4.8 meters. And it will be rotating counterclockwise about point A. And I'm taking counterclockwise as positive. So this whole thing is positive. And then the only other item I have here is my moment reaction AM. And I assumed it going clockwise. So it will be a negative inside of this equation. So my moment reaction is the only thing I have in this equation that's unknown, so I can rearrange and solve for it. And I get 1,890.8, and that would be Newton meters. And it came up to be a positive value, so that means my assumed arrow direction was the correct one. This positive arrow direction right here only dictates the pluses and the minus signs that show up inside the equation. If the answer comes out to be positive, that means that you assumed the correct direction at the beginning, which in this case is clockwise. Just keep that in mind. And there is my final reaction for part A. All right. So moving on to part two, it says determine the largest and smallest allowable tension T2 if the magnitude of the couple at A may not exceed 900 Newton meters. So what this means is that we have to determine what is T2's range such that it creates this moment down here at 900 Newton meters. Now, it didn't say if it was clockwise or counterclockwise. That's where the range comes into play. So we're going to have to run through this with a clockwise 900 Newton meters and then a counterclockwise 900 Newton meters, and we're going to get a range for T2 up here. So what we're going to have to do is that we are just going to sum moments about point A and solve for T2, given that AM will be 900 Newton meters in one direction, it will be clockwise, and then the next time it will be counterclockwise. And the only other force that we're going to have here is this FX component of the uh, 400 Newton meters, which we just have that right here. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and let's scroll down a little bit here. So for part B, we are going to have AM 
equal to 900 Newton meters. And we're going to start with counterclockwise, and then we are going to switch to clockwise, or we're going to start with clockwise, and then we're going to switch to counterclockwise, and we're going to get a range for T2. So for our first one, summing moments about 0.8 equal to zero, I'm going to copy and paste this portion down here for T1, which is 400 cosine of 10 degrees times the distance to point A, which is 4.8 meters. AM is going to be 900 Newton meters clockwise. So it is going to be minus 900 Newton meters. And then T2, well, T2's component and the X direction will be looking like this since it is going to be pulling in tension down into the right. So this will be going to the right. This will be causing a clockwise rotation about point A, so it will be negative. And the only difference that we're going to have here is that it's 20 degrees off the horizontal instead of 10 as with T1. So this will be minus T2 cosine of 20 degrees times the same distance as T1 to get it down to point A, which is 4.8 meters, and all of that has to be equal to zero. So T2 is the only unknown in this equation, so you can rearrange and solve for T2. And when you do this, you get 219.6 newtons, and it will be in that downward right direction. So there's one of my T2 values. Now, to get the other T2 value, because we're looking for a range of values, We've already used this one, so now let's switch over to AM being counterclockwise. So how does that change my equation? Well, let's just put it in red here. If I am changing to counterclockwise, the only thing that will change is that this becomes a positive inside my equation. Everything else remains exactly the same. So if I switch this from negative to positive, switching the arrow directions of AM, the 900 Newton meters, T2 will pop out to be 618.7 Newtons in that downward right direction. So part B was asking for determine the largest and smallest allowable tensions for T2, such that it creates a 900 Newton meter moment at the base at point A. Well, this would be my answer then for T2 for my range. And that would be my answer for part B, or you could write it like this. Either way is acceptable in my book, but that's how you would solve part B. <clears throat> and that's how you would solve the overall problem, part A and part B being reactions and then a range. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solve this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you've done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all that does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.